just goofing around. So many activities. So many activities. So much room for activities. Welcome into tonight's show. It is Thursday night here on NBR, our national hour. Nothing but rants, the show where we find topics that we're oddly passionate about and we pontificate upon them. Um, these are not hot takes, but rather takes that I'm hot about. Uh, when you give opinions, I mean, for a living, I think that's what I do. I think we can classify what I do right now as giving opinions for a living. When you give opinions for a living, you got to understand something about the internet. Every time you get introduced to a new audience, uh, particularly for me, the way that I do things, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of national analysts are kind of guys that just say a lot of good things about everybody. They just kind of give the proper stance and the good stance about everybody, and they always do that. And there might be some criticisms in there every once in a while, but they will never stand on a table and call somebody a cheater if they feel like someone has cheated, which is the way that I feel about this Michigan situation. I feel like they've gone way outside the means of standard sign stealing, and they've gone to deviant behavior, and they've gone about it in a way and such that I believe it is a form of of cheating. That is the way I've gone about this stance. That's the way I've gone about this, uh, you know, topic and storyline. And with that, okay, when you speak so negatively or perceptually negatively about a fan base, you're going to get the heat. Okay, understand that. You're going to get flamed up. People are going to come after you in your mentions. Um, so I learn a lot about fan bases when I get introduced to them in these metrics and in these fashions, okay? Um, and I've had all, uh, not all of them, I've had, a, I've had a lot of them at this point, right? Uh, as a Georgia beat reporter, I've covered Ohio State football games and I've been introduced to that fan base. I've covered Clemson football games and I've been introduced to that fan base. I've covered pretty much every SEC team in the conference and I've gotten introduced to those fan bases. Every single time one of these things happens, I learn exactly what and, and kind of who the negative, the really vitriol uh, people are in those fan bases. So, Michigan fans, welcome to the mentions, and I've learned a lot about you uh, through this process. First of all, someone today called me the Down Syndrome Pat McAfee, and I don't know if we can use Down Syndrome jokes anymore, but honestly, as the culprit and the victim, one of two victims, obviously the Down Syndrome community, but one of the two victims in this joke that I suffered today, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, That's good. It, it was clever, but again, in 2023, don't know if we can make Down Syndrome jokes. Probably shouldn't go with Down Syndrome jokes. But again, hey, if I was, if you told me I was a knockoff brand of Pat McAfee, I would tell you that you kind of get the show. You, you, you kind of understand what we're shooting for here, and we appreciate your approval there. Talked about it in the NBR hour. People definitely think this is my mom's basement. That's kind of funny, too. What, what is it? Is it because I look like I'm 18 and I can't grow facial hair? But someone called me an old white guy today on social media. So what is it about me? People mm. just can't read it? Interesting that people think that me and Christian are just pulling up to your mom's house and kicking it with you. Like we're still 12-year-olds yeah. having a sleepover every night. Absolutely. Um, nah, but this is, I this mean, is indeed my house. Yeah, to be fair, though, like how many people set up like a full-blown studio in their basement? I think we're one of one. Oh, this, so this does like, oh, he's just doing this in his mom's basement. Yeah, it does have no way that guy has that going yeah, on yeah. type vibes. Which, again, the exact notion of what... Remember when you guys sat in here and there was an unfinished basement? Oh, the, what I told you was, I want people to turn this on and go, God damn, who, brought, who bought Brooks out? Mm -hmm. Who gave Brooks all that, that money to invest? By the way, I mean, it was expensive. This, this rebuild was expensive. But if you allocate resources properly, if you work your ass off, this stuff is not that hard. Okay, it's not that hard to establish a, a high quality TV like network studio vibe, okay, in your mom's basement. You can get it done. Now, whether or that not she'll be the allow studio you. Name. Huh? That should be the studio. Brooks' name. mom's basement? Just mom's basement. Mom's basement? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily love it because I spent a lot of time and effort in this place building this. A um, lot, a lot of time and effort building this place. So, yeah, no, it is not my mom's basement. It is indeed my basement. Um, also notice that when you give football opinions for a living, if people don't like it, the first thing they will do is, clearly this guy's never played. And then when they do that with me, it quickly diverts to, clearly this guy didn't play high-level football, which is a funny little pivot that happens every single time someone runs into this mistake. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I will give about this audience, and particularly my followers on Twitter, um, y'all be going to war. Y'all be going to war. When, when the homies get attacked, y'all show up in spades, and I appreciate that. Uh, do, don't do it with pitchforks and knives. Do it with wit. Like, tell somebody to Google you, bro. Um, that, that's the way we like to do it around here. We don't like to be vitriol. Uh, don't like to be angry. Uh, just kind of like to, I, I'm here for these jokes, man. I'm here to have fun. 
uh, except for when you cheat football. And then I get really, 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 really upset because the sanctity of the sport means something to me. Oh, somebody called me a, a, a pearl clutcher in the Michigan fan base today. <laughs> yeah, I clutch pearls. I do. I do. Um, I, I worry about this game. I worry about the sanctity of the sport because I love the sport. Sue me. All right, get mad at me. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that it is that way. Uh, but nah, we learn something about every single fan base every single time I go, quote unquote, viral. I had a dude today put in a fake arrest and try to point me or paint me as a sexual offender. Yeah, wild. Never had that. I get a lot. Apparently, I've lost weight because I didn't see any. This dude is fat comments, and, which is Florida's pull. Florida <laughs> fan base, which granted, when I was, you know, really cracking on Dan Mullen and the Jays, I was walking around at like 285, 290, was drinking pretty heavily. I had real, real swelling in my face. I was a fat, fat dude. Um, so I can understand why that was the first trigger to pull. Um, never, never have I gotten Down syndrome. Um, so that was a new you one today. You don't contract it. <laughs> no, Theo Vaughn said you do. He's the first person to beat it. He, uh, he did say that. Hmm. He's the first person to beat Down syndrome. He said, never have I gotten Down syndrome. And not as a, not as a, a, a slight that someone thought. Ah, uh, okay. That's what you um, meant by it. I thought you meant like, I've never had it. Missing one. Um, but anyways, I learned a lot about the Michigan fan base. This being right here. Um, th there's this term Michigan men. Yeah. Okay. And they definitely have this holier than thou feeling about them. This fan base does that they are the supremacy of the sport, that they are this alpha male creation that just because they like Michigan football, that they are some kind of superior to everybody else. They're a Michigan man. Um, and I think that's why they've been so uh, attacking in the, in the mentions, because this has got to hurt. This has got to hurt. This has got to hurt to walk around every day thinking that you're the supremacy of this sport, that you are holier than everybody else, that you are a Michigan man, that you hold yourself to different standards, that you're the Ivy League of the Midwest. And then all of a sudden, your football team finally gets over the hump of your biggest rival, who you probably hate more than any other rivalry in the sport. Michigan and Ohio State hate each other more than any other rivalry that I've covered because there is no obvious and, and known big brother in that rivalry. All right, there isn't. They're normally pretty even. But recently, y'all been bad. Jim Harbaugh, 0 for 5, maybe 0 for 6 against uh, Ohio State. All right, and then all of a sudden, he's 2 and 0 against Ohio State. And you as a fan base, Michigan men-filled fan base, y'all think, oh, we got it figured out. And then all of a sudden, y'all find out that y'all been cheating the game and y'all been getting by doing a little bit something that you ain't supposed to be doing. And now all of a sudden, you're in everybody's comments and mentions going, no, 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 I promise. It's not a big deal. Okay, you still got to line up and play ball. I'm sorry. It's really, really unfortunate for you. It really, really is. And that's what I opened with the other night. I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you Michigan men that are out here in the comment sections going to war for a coach who does not love you. Your coach does not love you. I know he graduated from there. I know he's a Michigan man himself, but he's going to leave that program worse than he found it with some potential, whether they're grade two or grade three sanctions. Nonetheless, the rest of the college football world has a stain on Michigan if the rest of this stuff continues to be reported, reported truthfully, and the NCAA investigation comes out to find what we all believe to be true based off the reporting that you did cheat. And once that happens, everybody's going to cover your name and bring your name because of Jim Harbaugh and whatever's happened lately with these names, Houston Astros. That sucks. I'm sorry that sucks for you, all right? But it doesn't mean you got to get in everybody's mentions and act like you've been lately because you're supposed to be Michigan men. I just want to kind of wrap a bow on this right quick. In conclusion, Michigan, under the direction of Jim Harbaugh, currently has the following an investigation into the purchases of hamburgers for recruits and the subsequent lying about it under investigation of the NCAA. Their former offensive coordinator, uh, Matt Weiss, is currently under FBI investigation in his invo for his involvement in computer crimes uh, related to Michigan football right now as well. And number three, the, uh, the story that has obviously captivated the college football world this week. A recruiting staffer has been accused of the biggest cheating scandal in recent memory, uh, basically going out and advanced scouting football teams, uh, upwards of 40 opponents on the schedule to illegally uh, observe this year. And they're undefeated and the number two ranked football team in the country. Jim Harbaugh in a little bit of hot water. Um, but enough of Michigan. We got some ACC football talk to do.